What's up, Tech Heart Rockstars? I wanted to come on today and give you the long stream, the installation, setup, and hacking of an open source Thinkst Canary. Do you know what a Thinkst Canary is? I didn't before I heard it on the Linux Unplugged podcast, but I have heard of the canary in a coal mine before. Sentinel species are organisms, often animals, used to detect risk to humans by providing advance warning of a danger. The coal miner takes the canary in the cage down into the mine. If there's a gas leak, canary drops over, coal miners hopefully get out. And with our home networks, once you open a port or once you put anything online, a service, um, or you're inviting anybody to come to your home network, website, FTP, SSH, anything, whenever you open up your network, uh, no matter in what way you do it, uh, you are inviting hackers, not canaries, right? We want to make a canary. At any rate, a Thinks Canary is a commercial device uh, by a company called Thinkst, and their product is the Thinkst Canary. Let's go take a look at it. Here we are on the Thinkst website. You can see right there uh, their device, a Thinkst Canary. Now this bad boy right here costs around $2,500. And I think the big thing that they try to sell is one year, $7,500 with five of these devices and all of their support. Now that's really great if you're a Fortune 500 company or probably a, a middle of the road company and you can pay for this and you need their support and service, all of the things that they offer. However, they have released the Open Canary. It's open source software. It is like 90% of the meat of a Thinkst Canary. You can throw it on a Raspberry Pi. You can throw it on a virtual machine. I'm gonna throw it on a Proxmox VM for playing around here. You can install it. And whenever people are snooping on your network, it's your canary. Um, it'll let you know that somebody's in there. We can set it up with uh, opening it, you know, everything. We can open a Telnet port, FTP. We can open all the ports, Samba, blah, 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 and just leave it sitting there. But the system is a big goose egg, nothing. So what we're going to do today is install Open Canary, set up Open Canary, then use a Kali Linux uh, VM to try to hack or at least sniff. This is the long form video. There will be another video that just shows, you know, the quick thing, bing, 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 bing. But this is for y'all to come hang out with me and see how it goes. I haven't installed this yet and I haven't tried to sniff it. So uh, let's have some fun and get on in there. I'm gonna disappear from the screen and let's go. What we are on, the screen that you are looking at is just an Ubuntu machine I have a Kali Linux VM, that's one of my Proxmox VMs, and then I have an Ubuntu server VM. So we have a vanilla Ubuntu server VM that we're going to make our open canary. We have a Kali Linux VM that we'll use later, and we have our websites that we're looking at. So first things first, let's SSH into that vanilla Ubuntu server that we're going to create into our open canary. Bone stock Ubuntu server 2204. Let's scroll down on the open canary GitHub. It's just github.com slash thinkst slash open canary. Open canary is a multi-protocol network honeypot. Its primary use case is to catch hackers after they've breached non-public networks. Extremely low resource requirements. You can throw it on any hardware. We'll start with prerequisites. Python 3.7 or Python 3.9. I don't think Ubuntu server. Okay, we have 3.10, that's fine. We need SNMTP, we'll add that. We need Samba, if we want to have a Samba server, we'll add that. And port scan uses IP tables, which I think, yeah, we got that too. All right, so let's scroll down. So I'm gonna grab this first line right here and I'll copy it and I'll paste it over here. So we're gonna install Python 3 dev, Python 3 pip, virtual env, venv, scappy, lib SSL dev, and lib PC cap dev. I'll give that an install.
Okay, that's done. I can clear the screen. And now it tells us we have to start a virtual environment. So we'll create one. We'll type in virtual env and we'll make a directory env. Now we have that directory there. Then it wants us to run this activate command. So we'll do dot space env bin activate. And then we can install open canary with pip install open canary. Let's let that rock, baby. All right, we want to do all the optionals. So first we'll run sudo apt install samba. This will let us have a samba share. I think it tries to act like a Synology NAS. Okay. And then we need to install scappy and pcappy. <laughs> Pip install scappy and pcappy and g baby. Okay, we'll let pip install that. Wow, is it really that easy? Okay, I'm gonna clear the screen. And it looks like we're done for installation over here. So I'm gonna scroll down and we'll go to configuring open canary. We need to create an opencanary.com. It can either be in the directory, like it could be in this env directory if that's where we're gonna run it. But I think um, in our home directory, we can create an open canary dot comp file and that's what we'll go with we can create the configure file with open canary d dash dash copy config and now we can do a copy etc open canary d open canary dot comp now i want it in my home directory and i want to name it period open canary dot comp did i get it spelled right yeah so now I'll have that config comp file right there. I always like to copy my comp file to a back file in case I foobar everything. Let's vim that opencanary.comp file. We'll get in and we have a device node ID. We can name that whatever we want. Uh, I want to give it some heavy duty name like server one. That sounds good, right? Server one. If I was coming into your network, I think I'd want to Check that out. Some things are false. I want to enable every feature. So I'm gonna turn this to true. Uh, FTP server ready. You can change this to whatever you want. I'm gonna add in server one NAS login. Okay, we want the NAS login. I think that's the uh, Synology landing page on the website. We'll see that a little later. HTT proxy enabled. I don't think I need that. I would assume too, later on when we scan this stuff, I would assume you can change that skin or that graphical background to something else if you wanted to. Port scan enabled, I want that on. Port scan ignore local host. Yeah, true. SMB, Samba enabled, we want that. MySQL, we can probably use some SQL sniffing tools later. SSH port. So I'm actually using SSH on this machine. That's what we're in. So I'll change the SSH port to 2222. Redis, I don't even know what that is, but I'll set it to true. RDP, I want that. If I was a hacker and I saw RDP, I might poke around there a little bit. SMTP, we'll enable that. NTP, we're gonna enable that. We're gonna enable everything. TFTP. Okay, so here are these banners. I'm gonna enable the banner, enable the second banner, and data received banner. Data received at server one. <laughs> Initialization banner. Alert string, we'll do alert, alert, <laughs> uh, keep alive, we'll let that go, keep alive secret, we'll set to secret, because our passwords don't have to be strong here, you know we want some telnet, for this we'll use the uh, 
tech cart DBS. We'll call it the administration socket at server one. Okay, Telnet honey creds. Uh, so we have an admin and a long, long password. Let me write this real quick. And then admin and another password, admin one. We can add some more if we want. Some simple uh, Oops, username colon. We'll go with root. Oops, and I'm gonna have to add a comma here. And we'll do secret, or we can just do password on root. That's a great root password, right? And we'll have to close that bracket, and that should be right, yeah, there we go. Oh, we'll need a comma here too, I think. Make sure that, uh, Com file is set up, right? Uh, let's do MSSQL, yes. VNC, why not? <laughs> Come connect to my VNC, baby. Okay, so now we've turned on almost every feature. I know that you can go in here too in the, uh, what section can I find it? In the handlers section, and you can add SNTP email. So when somebody does access this honeypot, it can email your, your Gmail or, or whatever you set up. You can do that through here. I'm not gonna do so right now, but that is an option. And from what I can gather, Open Canary has a lot of options if you read their documentation. It's really full featured, and like I said, about 90% of the actual Thinkst Canary product minus the support. Okay, so it talks down here about optional modules and Samba setup, okay? We're gonna go over to the wiki. So this is the main wiki. And we're gonna go through the frequently asked questions and make sure we set all this up right. So to get Samba to work, we're gonna to have to click here. Useful commands before we start to restart syslog, systemctl restart our syslog and syslog. And to restart Samba, SMD control all reload config and then systemctl restart SMD and NMDB. Okay, let's get Samba ready. So we're gonna to need to make a root slash samba directory. So we'll do a sudo make directory slash samba. We'll do a sudo chone user user on slash samba. That's so we can write in that samba directory. And it wants us also to change the permissions to 755 on slash samba. So we can touch a file testing.txt. We can even edit it. Server dash one up. We can also edit some other files if you wanted to. We can call it password or we can call it uh, admin.pword. And what would we put root and password and admin one secret. We fake uh, passwords here. I always like to start with an empty line. Silly me. So now we have a couple files over there in Samba. Okay, we need to edit the default smb.conf in etc. samba. As I stated, I'm going to copy this to a back file. Okay, sudo vim smb.conf, and now I'm gonna delete everything in that. We'll take all the protections out of samba and add in a whole nothing sandwich. <laughs> now, we can copy this config right here, and let's post paste that here. There we go. Work group is work group. The server string is NB docs. I don't know, I want server dash one docs. And then server one that fits. It'll log to var log samba slash log all. Max of 100, I'll set that a little higher. Map to guess bad user. Okay, I'm good with all that except all the stuff I'm gonna change to server one text share. Guest okay, yes. Read only, yes. Browsable, yes. All right, so we'll save that file. And now we need to restart Samba, which if we remembered up here, we'll do a sudo smb control all reload config and then systemctl restart smbd and nmbd. So Samba's restarted and we have to configure our syslog. So let's go to etc. Oops, there we go. And what we'll do is uh, I'm gonna copy rsyslog.conf to rsyslog.back 
and now I'll sudo vim rsyslog.conf. For this one, we just have to add one line to the end over here. Press enter twice, and that line that we add is local seven. There we go. Copy that and paste it. Local seven and point it to uh, var log samba audit dot log. I'll clear the screen. We can do a sudo touch slash var slash log samba dash audit dot log. And we want to chone syslog colon adm at var log samba dash audit. I'll need a sudo on that. And then restart syslog to go check that again. sudo systemctl restart our syslog and regular syslog. Enable Samba monitoring by editing our opencanary.conf. We've already done that and we have SMB enabled to true. We can check that, but I know that we do. We can search in here for smb.enabled and we have that set to true. Okay. Now it's ready for us to start. It says to run open canary D uh, flag flag start. And that will start our open canary. We can stop it with open canary D flag flag stop. And I also want to look at the other options. So you have flag flag start that starts it. You can run in flag flag dev and that will leave the process in the foreground so you can see all the things trying to access it. We'll run it this way here in a minute. And that's it. Start, stop, run in dev mode or run in user module mode. I'm not going to try to access the share, but there it is running. Let's look at any other fat questions. How do we use dockerized open canary? We're not doing that. How do I start open canary on startup? That's neat. I mean, do I want to do it for the screen? All we'd be doing is creating an open canary dot service. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's something cool if you want to. I think they even have an open canary dot service. Yeah, right here. So I can just edit that and add it to my home folder if I want to add that later. Uh, you just have to go in here, edit for your user and the uh, locations. You know, you'd have to edit where it's pointing to. And then if we wanted to use that, we could just throw that into slash etc slash system D slash system, start it and enable it. And that would load open canary every time we start the machine. Okay, now let's try to play with this puppy. I'm going to close down the documentation. And let's look at our system. This is our open canary system and I'm at 10.00.128. That's my IP. Let's pull open this Kali Linux VM. This is just a VM running on my Proxmox server. It's Kali Linux. It's on the same network. So I'll log into my Kali Linux. I'll open up a terminal nmap dash V on 10.10.128. Notice we do not have open canary running right now. Here, actually, let me make that bigger for us too. Let's run that mmap command on our open canary server without open canary running. So we do have ports 445, 22, that's SSH, and 139 are open for these three services, NetBIOS, Microsoft, and SSH. Now though, let's turn on our open canary D and we're going to run it in dev mode. Now our canary is running and we're going to run a more verbose nmap command. It's a dash V dash A, I guess, dash capital A, dash SV. That runs a verbose mode scan, enables OS detection, version detection, script scanning, trace route, and another version detection. Okay, version detection. Uh, we'll run that against 10, oh, oh. <laughs> I have my other, <laughs> I have other IPs in there for different projects. So let's run that more verbose on map. And now we can see that Samba that we had, we can see work group that was set up through Samba 2. We can see our port 21 FTP, 22, that's actually a real port that we're using. That's that's actually this window right here. Um, I don't see port 2222 and I thought we had that open. You see anything over here about that? Is there, was there an issue? Oh, look at that. Okay, I see uh, line 96 issue, line 96 colon 9. Let's go check that out. We're going to vim. 96.9. Oh, that's where I added this. On the password, it doesn't need a comma. See, we have to have that perfect. Let's try to run that again in dev mode and we'll read it more this time. Okay, at any rate, I think that opened up more stuff. Let's go back here and we will now rerun that heavy nmap command. There we go. 
Uh, when we get into this too, you can see over here, Open Canary reports every time it gets pinged. The Cali box is 0.127 and uh, the Open Canary box is 0.128. That end map is scanning 1,000 total ports, so it's really hitting that box. I mean, much more than normal. So this canary, I mean, it sticks out like a thumb. You know, I think a lot of pen testers would know what it is, but the script kitties that try to get into your Telnet, SSH, all your services, they might not. All right, now we can see a lot more information about those uh, Samba shares, different service fingerprints, and this is all just a honeypot. This is, is nothing that's going to hurt our uh, system. It's acting like it's a Synology Disk Station. You got Synology Disk Station Manager. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to dump those two end maps into a file, but I won't make you wait for it. I'm going to shut down Open Canary real quick. I'm going to do that once more. Nmap dash V. I'm going to dump it to a file. And now I have all of that information in a, a text file, nmapopencanary.txt. When Open Canary is down, we can see just a few ports that are opened. And when it's up, we get a much bigger nmap scan. So I save that. Now let's open up another tool. Let's jump into Wireshark. Wireshark shows us every packet that goes through our network. I'm going to apply a display filter for IP address 10.00.128. So this will only show us Wireshark traffic hitting the Open Canary box. I'll start Wireshark and now in this status screen, we should only see open canary traffic. You can already see down here, you know, the packets are coming in, but none are being displayed because we are only gonna show the open canary traffic. Let's make sure open canary is running in dev mode so we can see the output. So Wireshark is running in the background. That's great. We can exit out of here for now. Let's open up another software called Legion. Now Legion allows us to do a lot more sniffing on a box. Wait, does that sound right? We can read the, uh, help. Legion is a fork of SecForce's Sparta. It's an open source, easy to use, super extensible and semi-automated network penetration testing tool that aids in discovery, reconnaissance, and exploitation of information systems. So uh, we can click here in the hosts and we're going to add 10.00.128. You can change these settings but I'm not going to. I'm going to go on easy mode. It's still aggressive. Actually, I could change that to insane. That might be cool. But I'm not going to change the port scan scan options or the uh, host discovery options. And I'll start that. And let's go over our honeypot. We can see here Nmap stage one is running. We can see Wireshark is starting to fire up with all the traffic to the honeypot from this machine. And Open Canary is listening and, and reporting everything that's hitting that box. So you have Legion running on Kali Linux, hitting that, uh, that network device, the Open Canary, and it does a lot of different stuff than just the Nmap scan. It reports to us the open ports that it's finding. It also, here's a screenshot. Okay, yeah, there's that uh, fake Synology NASC disk station. We could actually go check that out if we wanted to. I think it's on port 80, so we could open up Firefox, right? And we could jump over to 10.00128. And yeah, see that? That's our open canary right there. Um, we can type in a username and password. I don't think it'll let us in, but um, this is open canary displaying a fake Synology login page. And Legion caught that. Oh, both port 80 and 443. I can scroll over here. There's a MSSQL. We'll see this here in a minute. Uh, Legion, the software, it suggests to us, hey, you can maybe use the penetration tool Hydra on this port or this uh, database. It gives you suggestions of more ways you can try to attack the box. As it's going in the background, like right now, it's on Nmap stage three, but it's done all of these other attacks. They're not really attacks right now, but sniffing and trying to figure out what the open canary is. Never try to hack or, or go looking at a network that's not yours. But we're allowed to do this, man. This is our hardware. They can't slow us down on our home network, baby. Uh, so after this is all done, though, it will give us a report over here. It'll tell us all of the services that were available. It'll tell us scripts that it can run or did run. It'll give us information about the box. It'll tell you all the CVEs. Now, this is when it's done. It'll tell you all the, the exploits that you might be able to use to get into this box. Oops, there we go. We had CVEs populating. 
I, I messed up. There we go. It tells you the exact security exploit that you could use to try to get into the Open Canary box. Samba exploits, HTTP server exploits. I'm gonna keep letting that Legion roll. We can also do stuff like we could do FTP to 10, uh, 128. That's the open canary box. And yeah, look, there's an FTP server. That's the banner that we gave it. Remember, uh, FTP server ready, server one. And we could do a name of admin and there's a password required secret and it's wrong. But that is that open canary server. And map stage four. I think this goes through like six stages of NMAP. Uh, scans. So I'm just going to let Legion die down. I'm going to pop over to Wireshark and you can continue to see the packets that come through. These are all packets that are going through that open canary box. Through Kali, you can look at every single packet if you wanted to. It gives you all the information of the packet. So there's a lot of data here is what I'm trying to say. I'm by no means a network rock star or a hacker, but it's really neat to see some of the tools that you can use. And Kali Linux has hundreds of them. Okay, is that finished? I think that it is. Need a couple spaces on the open canary box so I can see if any more data comes through. And yeah, look over here. Uh, Legion tells us all of the different ports that are open. Let's check out port I know a little bit more about. Let's go to Telnet. Check for default Telnet credentials. There we go. Uh, so over here on the open canary, I'm trying to read here, give it some spaces. We can open with its protocol. There's the honeypot fake Telnet login. Over here, you can see the username and password that we tried. Uh, let's go to scripts. So this talks vulnerabilities on the 80 port that's open. And it tells you, you might be able to use CVE 2017-7619 and all the different uh, tools that might help you get into these different ports. Here's a full listing of that. Now we can save this Legion scan. Uh, we'll save it in our home folder, I think. Legion. Um, open canary scan. All that data is there for us. We can also save this Wireshark, uh, all the packets that we caught. We caught uh, 138,000 packets. There's that telnet that we were trying. So we can save these Wireshark data. Oh, we have to stop it first. Okay, let's stop Wireshark. Now we can save it. We can say Wireshark open canary packets. I'm going to close Wireshark. Another thing that Legion can do, now we've done the scan, right? Let's go over to services here and we'll go to the FTP, let's just say. We can send this to Brute and now we can click on the Brute tab. We have our IP address in there and we have service FTP. We can try found usernames and found passwords. Let me go over here, give some space. Let's run that. I believe, oh, and it's using Hydra in the background. Hydra is another uh, program. You can use it from the command line here. Please do not use in military or secret server illegal purposes. So that's running, but I don't know, maybe we don't have any found username or passwords. I'm not sure, and I, I didn't point to a username list. We can just try, let's say, we're gonna use root, root and password, and let's run that again. There we go. Open Canary is telling us someone tried with username and password Brute. I believe we can send other things to Brute. I believe we can send everything to Brute. Right, these are all the vulnerabilities. If we select each one, like if we go to port 80 and right click, this is all the HTTP things that we can do with Legion. I don't know what the hell any of them are, <laughs> but maybe you do. I'm gonna stop all these Brutes. So that's Legion. a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. We're sorry. You have